close your eyes and imagine. They say the pen is mightier than the sword. <laughs> oh, that's what they say. Now, I don't know about that, but judging from the number of books in the world, there are an awful lot of people trying to prove it. Most of them were written by distinguished scholars in one field or another, but this book, this one was written by a young girl. Does anybody else keep a diary? Do you keep a diary? What's your name? Jessica. Jessica? <laughs> Dust. Very strange. Do you keep your diary locked like this one? Yeah. Why, for heaven's sake? Because it's private. It's private. Or is it because you're afraid that the words might somehow break free from the book and do somebody harm? <laughs> huh? Is that a silly idea? I don't know. I mean, it's a good story. These words are just words, aren't they? Yes, or are they? Jessica! What? Where have you been? I've been looking for you for ages. I've been taking down the tree. Like you asked. What else did I ask you to do? Feed the pigs. Am I expected to do everything around here? Never mind sighing, miss. Just hurry up, please. Mom. Rose? Are you feeling any better? Mike's got some help today. That young lad who lives across the fields. What's his name? Chris. He's a good lad. Hard worker. And Jessica's helping too, I expect. Ernie? I'm here, Rose. Christmas presents. Didn't write the Christmas presents. Yes, we did. We wrapped them and we unwrapped them. And we had a lovely time. It's January, Rose. And spring might be a long time coming this year. Uh, need a hand? To feed pigs? Just thought I'd ask. You've got a nice place. A lot more animals than I thought. No wonder your dad needed help. He's not my dad. He's my stepfather. Oh, does that make a difference? How's your mom? Is she any better? Oh. About the same, really. What's wrong with her anyway? She got that flu? Because I got that real bad about two months ago. I thought I was going to die. I really did. Is that what she's got? The flu? You ask a lot of questions, don't you? Do I? Well, sorry. We haven't been introduced. I'm Chris. Yeah, I know. Well, I'd ask your name, but there'd be another question. It's Jessica. You must have known that. I did. It's just polite when someone tells you their name to tell them yours. Oh, is it? Well, I'll try and be more polite in future. Jess, when you've finished chatting, I need you to go into town and get me some groceries. Now, there's a list in there and some money. And don't take long about it. Mike's in a bad enough mood as it is. When you're young, the world can be a complicated place full of strange emotions, too dark and too powerful to be contained within one small heart. Jessica went to town that morning with a sense that somehow her life was about to change, and she was right. But how that change was to come about, no one, least of all Jessica, could have possibly foreseen. Would you like me to put it in a bag? Or perhaps you'd prefer to read it here, is that it? No. Some people do, you know. I've seen them just browsing, they tell you. So innocent. No. Putting honest traders out of business, that's what you're doing. Well, I wasn't doing that. I was just browsing. 
what are you looking for in particular? Nothing. <laughs> Everybody's looking for something. Especially the young. Young people never stop looking for the answer. The answer to what? The question, what else? Excuse me. I have to buy some groceries. Nice talking to you, Jessica. Did you call me Jessica? That's your name, isn't it? Yeah, but how do you know? Naturally, I just assumed you were taking such an interest in the book. The book? Not that I blame you. It's an antique, it's very rare. Actual diary of a local girl, written exactly a hundred years ago. Jessica. That's why you picked it up. It's got your name on it. Destiny, you see? How much? I thought you weren't interested. I've got some money. Will this do? This is your parents' money. For buying groceries. Yeah. So what are you going to tell them? What do you mean you lost it? How? I keep telling you. There was a hole in my pocket. The money must have dropped through. Well, uh, did you retrace your steps? Did you look for it? Yes. Well, someone would have found it and pocketed it by then. There's a lot of dishonest people about. You're right, Annie. There are. I can't believe this. He thinks I'm lying. Oh, no one's saying that, Jess. He doesn't have to. He's always picking on me. Every little thing. Keep your voice down. Your mother is asleep. Now listen, Jess. I've had about enough of these little moods of yours. Things are bad enough around here without you making it worse. It was an accident. I'm not talking about the money. And you know it. I'm talking about you. Now, we know you're upset about your mom. We all are. But moping around the house all day isn't going to help matters. You're not a little girl anymore. The sooner you start facing up to your responsibilities, the better it'll be for all of us. Can I go now? as is the custom on the twelfth night after Christmas. And now, the whole house wears an empty, forlorn look. Most of the afternoon was spent clearing up the mess. I had managed to get tinsel in my hair, and it proved the very devil to remove it all, sitting at my bedside mirror, brushing and brushing. I was called to supper, but did not go, feeling, I confess, a great melancholy sweeping over me. Supper's ready. And so to bed, with but one secret thought to console my poor heart. Sweetest William, how my love for him has grown, until not a single hour passes when I do not think upon his dear face. If only he returned my feelings, how happy I would be. Wash, rinse, spin. Got that? Jessica? Yeah? Sorry, Annie. What were you saying? Talk about spin. Your head's in a spin as usual. Now pay attention. Wash, rinse, spin. And don't leave the clothes sitting in there or they'll crease. Take them out, good shake, then straight on the line. All right? <laughs> don't worry, you'll manage. And Annie? What? Why do you have to leave? Because I've got my own family to look after, Jess. I'll be back before you know it. What's the matter? Don't leave me on my own with him. Who, oh, Mike? Oh, why ever not? You saw him shouting at me. Whatever I do, it's always wrong. He'd rather I wasn't here at all. He hates me. <gasps> Now, I don't want to hear that kind of talk. Mike's got a lot on his mind, that's all. Just try to get on with him a little better. 
You always used to, didn't you? You never had arguments before. Mom's never ill before. Try and be patient. Try and help Mike. Everything will work out all right if we all just stick together. Ooh, what's that? What? Oh, nothing. Just a bit of tinsel in your hair. <gasps> you were sparkling at me. It's gone now. your sandwich. Thanks. Can I ask you something? Sure. Do you believe in ghosts? Why? Have you seen one? No. Not exactly. Well, what then? Been hearing footsteps in the corridors. It's nothing or... I've been hearing either. It's a book I'm reading. A book? A diary, written by someone called Jessica, a hundred years ago. I keep finding all these coincidences. Like what? Well, her name, and the fact that she's my age, and, and some other stuff. Is it scaring you? I suppose it is. Well, then stop reading it. I can't. I have to see what happens to her. In case it happens to you? You're laughing at me. No, I'm not, really. January 6th, a hundred years ago. She was taking some decorations down from the Christmas tree. And that's what I was doing on the same day. Yesterday, January 6th. Well, of course, 12th night. That's where everybody does. I wouldn't worry about it. It's a coincidence. Well, it must be. I've never heard of anyone being haunted by a book. Thank you, dear. Are you gonna be all right? Oh, yeah. I'll just have a little sleep and then I'll be fine. I mean, are you gonna get better? Of course I am, why? It's just, I overheard the doctor say he didn't know it was wrong. They never do. You can't rely on them. He said you ought to be in hospital. When was that? The last time he came. Mike told me he'd been once. I didn't like it. That's right, I don't. The food's terrible. Mom. Hmm. Let me look after you. You are, honey. I mean all the time. Then Mike would be free to do the farm work. I could cook for you, do the cleaning, everything. But you've got school. Not till next week. And if you're not better by then, I'll stay at home. I won't go. They won't mind. And we can tell them... Jessica, can't you see your mother's trying to sleep? Now come away. He is not my real father, and he never will be. He is mean to me and spiteful. He is trying to destroy me, just as he has my mother. He is loathsome and detestable. How I hate him. I hate him. I hate him. You look terrible. I didn't sleep a wink last night. This is it?
I don't understand. The pages are blank. Look in the front. She only wrote the diary for a few days, and then she suddenly stopped. You pay good money for an empty diary? It's what she writes. What she thinks. How could she know? How could she describe in every detail everything that's happening to me? A hundred years ago to the day. January 13th. Today's the day my heart pounds and my hand shakes so violently that I can scarcely hold my pen as I commit these last few words to paper. I pray the Lord my I pray soul. the Lord my soul to keep. There is no escape. No time to run, nowhere to hide. The terrible deed can wait no longer. He is going to kill me. Who's he? Her stepfather, of course. You don't really think Mike wants to kill you? Why not? He's never liked me. From the day he moved in. You want my advice? Throw it away. Don't read it again. In a week's time, you'll be back at school. Wait a minute, what's this? What? Sweetest William. Oh, that. That's the only part that doesn't fit. How my love for him has grown? If only he returned? I think I've read enough. Chris? <sighs> Chris, what's the matter? What's wrong? It's not funny, Jess. I believed you. What do you mean? You wrote that book. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. To get back at Mike. Now, I don't want to play your silly games anymore. I don't understand. Who told you my real name is William? What? Chris is my middle name. I've always preferred it. Who told you? Or is it just another one of your coincidences? Are you sure you can manage, Mike? I suppose I could stretch it another day or two. No, Annie. You've done more than enough already. It's not fair keeping you here any longer. Well, if you're sure. Hey, I can manage. I'm a grown man. I can look after Rose. Don't worry. She's safe with me. And me. There you are. We've given you up. Your meal's cold. I'm not hungry. Jess! I can look after my mother as well as you, you know. Jess. Jess, get back here. <laughs> Jessica found it hard to sleep that night. It seemed as if the whole night was awake and disturbed as she was. The wind howled. The barn owl screeched like a banshee. The clouds raced over the moon, casting eerie shadows on her wall and on the diary beside her bed. The diary seemed alive, calling to her in pain and anguish. And when she did finally sleep, the nightmares came. You're not a little girl anymore. The sooner you start facing up to your responsibilities, the better it'll be for all. He's not my real father, and he never will be. He's mean to me and spiteful. He's trying to destroy me, just as he is my mother. He's trying to destroy me, trying to destroy me. Me. Jessica, 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 it's getting late. I have to go. Remember, you were going to come with me to the station. I'm up. Oh, what's this? I didn't know you kept a diary. Don't look in it. Oh, I wouldn't dream of reading it. I was young once. I kept secrets. Diary's a very good thing. Write it all down. Get it all out of your system. Get what out of my system? Oh. Anger, frustration. You don't have to explain it to me. I've been there. You were angry at my age? <laughs> All the time. <laughs> what about? Everything. Parents, boyfriends, all the usual stuff. Nothing to worry about. Now, you're not to worry about anything. There's enough food in the house to keep you going. And I expect Chris will be round to help you out now and again. Yeah, I expect so. Things are never as bad as they seem, Jess. You need to have a little faith, that's all. What is it? There's a bookstore. In between those two shops. A bookshop? Are you sure? I don't remember one here. No? Maybe I imagined it. 
Well, I'm gonna miss my train if I don't hurry. Thanks, Aunt Annie. What for? You know. Oh, come here. <laughs> now, don't forget to pick up the veggies before supper. Aunt Annie's common sense and kindness had lifted Jessica's spirits. Even though she was now alone, she felt that a dark cloud had been lifted from over her head. The diary was, after all, only a mirror of the thoughts of many young girls in her situation. An interesting curio. Nothing more. feeling? A little better. What's the weather like? The weather? It's perfect. It's the perfect washing day. Oh, hello. Thought there was Annie for a minute. I fed the pigs and cleaned the kitchen. Oh, great. Thanks. And I gave Mom some of the soup you made. She ate every drop. Good. That's real good news. <sighs> Diary had come back to haunt her. And with it returned Jessica's fear and dread. This. This was no ordinary diary. It was meant for her. It told her life and thoughts. And it couldn't be destroyed until its fateful words were acted out to their dreadful end. Terrible deed that could wait no longer. I don't know what you want me to do. What can I say that'll help? You could believe me. That would help. All right, if you say you didn't write it, I believe you. But it still doesn't mean there's any ghosts involved. And how do you explain what's happening? I threw it in the river, Chris. Watched it float away. But it's not even wet. Well, why should Mike want to hurt you, even if he hated you? Now tell me again about this affair he's supposed to be having. What do you mean, supposed to be? Remind me. January 9th, that's today, says Mike's having an affair. He's gonna meet another woman in town. Mike, your stepfather. Hers, mine. It's all the same. Don't you see? It explains everything. This farm is in my mom's name. With us out of the way, he stands to inherit everything. And then in a few months, when the heat's off, he'll move his new girlfriend in here. <laughs> The diary is trying to warn me. Where's Mike now? In town, just as the diary predicts. Do you want me to prove it? He tried to dissuade me from the venture, but I pressed on, and he followed. After today, I would have no further need of William's pity, for he would see for himself the extent of my stepfather's duplicity. After today, no longer would he think me mad. I don't suppose that bar was even there a hundred years ago. That's not the point. This is where Mike drinks. If he's gonna meet anyone in town, it'll be here. I feel like a spy. If you're wrong, Jess, I... I hope I am wrong. How do you think I feel about all this? I've hardly slept a wink in days, and when I do, I have nightmares. 
With any gun, there's no one to help if he attacks in the night. Have you thought about that? Wait. That's her. How do you know? I just know. Come on. Let's take a closer look. Jess, do you think this other woman is in on it? Probably. Jess, I think we ought to get out of here. Look! I told you. Why do we have to have soup every day? Don't you like it? It's all right. What's in it? My old family recipe. Just vegetables, barley, one or two little touches I've added. I make it because it's all your mother can eat. But there's other stuff if you want it. I don't mind. How did your business meeting go? My what? In town. You said that... Oh, fine. Who are you doing business with? Anyone I know? What is this? Just making conversation. You told me to make an effort. So I am. Well... No. It's no one you know. Now, come on. Stop your talking and eat your soup. Actually, it's a bit hot. I might just let it cool down for a bit. He's poisoning the soup. That's why my mom's ill. I read about it once. It's supposed to be the perfect murder. Put a little bit of poison in the food each day, lowers their resistance. Eventually, they get ill and die. Well, show me in the book where it says he's poisoning her. Jessica doesn't tell you everything. You've got to read between the lines. I may be dying already, and I don't even know it. Oh, calm down. I've got an idea. What? Now, I don't know if what you're saying is true, but if it is, then time's on our side. How do you mean? Well, nothing can happen to you until the 13th. That's four days away. That gives us plenty of time. To do what? To find out once and for all who this ghost of yours really is. Now, Jessica. Jessica. What year did you say? 1899, a hundred years ago. Mm. No, sorry. Are you sure? Not in this parish. I've got one for 1886. We're 13 years out. Of course, she was 13 when she wrote the diary. What does it say about her? Well, just the name, Jessica Brown. Does it say when she died? We already know that. This book just registers births. Well, how can we find out for sure? A hundred years ago, this was a small town, tight-knit community. Opportunities to travel would have been fairly limited. So what are you saying? She may not be too far away. Jessica Brown, 1886 to 1960. Happy now? And she lived to be an old lady. And whatever happened on that day 100 years ago, she must have survived it. If anything happened at all. Jess? There is no escape. 
No time to run, nowhere to hide. The terrible deed can wait no longer. She could have made it all up. I mean, you know what young girls are like. I mean, well... She's warning me. Her destiny and mine are linked somehow. No, Jess. You're making the link, not her. Thanks for your help, Chris. Sorry I bothered you. It's no bother. Where are you going? I've wasted enough of your time. Goodbye. It's not your destiny. You've got to burn the diary. And don't let it rule your life. Destroy it. Jess! Say ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Good. Well, nothing seriously wrong, no sign of infection, no fever. But you do look a bit under the weather. I think you did the right thing, Mike, asking me to look her over. Actually, it was Jess's idea. She's been sleeping badly and hardly eating at all. Not eating? Why is that? Jess? Well, speak up. You're the one who asked for a doctor. Mike, could we have a minute alone, do you mind? You should... I mean, your real father died, and your mother's ill. He's got another woman. He's going to kill me and my mother and set up home with her. He may have killed my real father, too. He does it with the soup. The soup? Poison! In the soup. I see. Um, I might just have a quick word with Mike. No! Please! It's all right. I won't tell him what you just told me. I'll... I'll, I'll be right back. appreciate how hard it is for you, for both of you, but if you could just... You left this. <laughs> Thank you, Jessica. And now, come here. Sit down. The both of you. We need to have a little talk. You've both been very brave the way you've coped without Rose to look after you. But sometimes the bravest thing of all is just to sit down with the other person and, well, tell them what you're feeling. 
no matter how difficult, right, Jess? I want you two to sort this thing out. Oh, oh sorry. I didn't mean to frighten I didn't mean to frighten you. I was on my way home, uh, just passing. What is it? Did you find out something? Well, yeah. And the funny thing is, it was quite by chance. I was doing some research for myself. Well, what have you got? Show me. I didn't bring it with me. I left it at the church office. If you want to come by sometime... Well, let's I'm... go now. Now? I'm on my way home for lunch. Please, it's important. How do we get there? I have a car, but... Oh. Chris was hurrying away before the man could finish. He knew that today was the day. He was certain she was planning something, or rather the diary was, something dangerous, deadly. He had to prevent it, to help his friend, if he could. I was researching the 60s. Well, not really researching, uh, indulging in a bit of nostalgia. I was in a rock band. <laughs> you wouldn't think it to look at me, would you? Screaming turnips. I was uh, down at the local paper trying to find a review they did of us. No luck, I might add. Could we get to Oh, oh yeah. Anyway, I, I came across this. Jessica Brown's obituary, 1960. I knew I'd heard that name before. She was a famously mad woman, put away at a young age. Suffered from uh, delusions of all kinds. Quite mad. Madder than a screaming turnip. Don't tell me. She thought her stepfather was going to kill her? I expect so. If he was, he didn't get the chance. She poisoned him. Why do you think she was put away? Well, they would have hanged her. But she was young and insane. Poor thing. A terrible deed. What's that? You've got to take me back there, back to Jessica's. <laughs> Come on, quickly! I'm on my lunch hour! I know I can never replace your real dad, Jess. I don't want to, believe me. You loved him, and, and that's right. You should never forget him. I won't. Ever. Good. Because that wouldn't be right. But your mom and I, well, we're together now. And nothing can change that. I guess that's why I hated you. Because I felt so jealous. Like I'd been pushed out. Of course you did. I should have made allowances for that. I'm sorry, Jess. We should have had a talk like this a long time ago. Listen, uh, I've got to uh, put some lunch on. But we'll talk some more later, huh? And Dad, I'll make lunch today. Can't you go any faster? This is life or death. Would you mind telling me what this is all about? The woman's been dead for 40 years. Not quite dead. Come on, faster, faster. I can't. I'm not a racing driver. If you play like you drive, no wonder your rock band was no good. Hate him. 
He is going to kill me. The terrible deed can wait no longer. What have we stopped for? It's a red light. I'm giving you a lift, but I draw the line at getting arrested for dangerous driving. No, wait, stop! The lights are green! Stop! Aren't you having any? I'm not that hungry. Maybe later on. You're a good girl. Spitting image of Rose, too. I'm proud to have you as a daughter. I'll be in my room. Jessica breathed a sigh of relief. Her whole body relaxed. She was safe now. She had won. In a short while, it would be over. The nightmare of the diary would end. She would be free to live her life, a long and happy one, with her mother safe and well again. It was just a matter of time. Just a little time. Can't you go any faster? I can't wait to tell them the good news. Jess, Jessica, it's me. Everything's all right. I've burned the diary. You're free. Look, I'm sorry, but it was your fault. Oh, her fault? Absolute rubbish. You were clearly in the wrong. What on earth do you think you were doing? If you've got a shred of honesty, you'll admit you were just as much to blame. We were certainly going fast, but you weren't even looking where you were going. Okay, you win. I'm sorry. She was insane. She killed her father. That's why the entries stop when they do. Not because she was dead because she was put in an institution. They wouldn't allow her to take her diary in there. Jess, 
Say something. You're too late. What do you mean? Jess, what have you done? Chris, what's up? I didn't know you were here. No, I uh, wasn't. But now I am. Did you uh, want some lunch? It's very good. Well, Jess made it. No. Thanks. That'll be Annie and Pat. Jess, look, I meant to tell you, Pat's an old college friend of mine. She's a doctor, and I hadn't seen her for years. Then when we took Rose to the hospital for the tests, there she was. Anyway, she said she'd bring back the test results today. I suppose I'd better let her in. What's the matter? I'm, I'm just so nervous. I... We should have told you, Jess. We should have told you how ill Mum was. But I didn't have the courage. He's eaten a lot. How much poison did you put in? I put it all in Mike's bowl. Maybe it wasn't really poison. Maybe, maybe it was... Chris, that's not the bowl I gave him. This is blue. I gave him the white one. Why would he pour himself another bowl? Oh, no! Jess. Mom! Mike said you made the soup. Yeah. Let me help you. I don't need feeding. I'm not an invalid. Ah, oh, Jess! Now look what you've done, you clumsy child. I'm sorry. Was it good? Did it taste all right? How would I know? I hadn't even tried it yet. Well, I'll get you some more. Rose, look who's here with some good news. Bless you, Rose. It's not what we thought. There is something there, but it's harmless. A little operation and you'll be right as rain. Oh, bad. And not a minute too soon. Mike wasn't holding up too well. Isn't it wonderful? All that time thinking the worst. It's been a nightmare. Well, now the nightmare's over. Jess, give me a hug. I'm sorry I shouted at you right now. I love you, Mom. I love you too, honey. Go now. This place gives me the creeps. In a minute. I don't understand. How come you care about her so much after all you've been through? She was evil. No. She was alone and very frightened. She did what she thought she had to do. Insane, maybe. But evil? No. Okay, but she didn't need to put you through the same hell that she went through. I think she did. She can rest, now that I've survived. I can feel it. She's at peace now. January 14th, back to school tomorrow. And for once, I'm looking forward to it. Mom's a lot better. She even got up for an hour this morning. We told her not to overdo it. There's no rush. Me and Mike have got the housework down to a fine art. I'm writing my new diary, which Chris bought me. I'll always treasure it. Of course, Mike never knew how close he had come to death. Neither Jessica nor Chris ever spoke about it again. And they stayed close, and eventually, they got married. But that's another diary altogether. It all goes to prove at least one thing. It is possible to be haunted by a book. But then, some of us knew that already. In the silence of a sleep.
Close your eyes. 